Mm. Well, hi for now. This Christmas has been the kind of Christmas where, let's say you're setting off to see some friends and family. Maybe you're driving, maybe you're walking, maybe you're riding on a donkey. And at first, everything's going fine. You're doing good for time, you've got plenty of food and water, your ass is moving like the wind, but then you encounter a road closure and get diverted. So after a while, you're dangerously low on fuel, you're running low on energy, and your ass is struggling to pass the larger obstacles. Hope raises its charmingly naive head at the sign of some roadside surfaces up ahead, but as you get closer, you see that they are out of fuel and there are no vacancies at the motel, and you think, God, why did you let this happen to me? Surely you wouldn't let this happen to someone that you really care about? Really? We should have seen this one coming. You know what I mean? Borg Rathercast Episode 25 The Yule Tide is Out Everywhere you go at Christmas, you see that it's a time of giving, sharing, and being with loved ones. I, I don't mean giving and sharing with loved ones, obviously. For me, that's always meant being with my family. There are the cringeworthy party games, my dad's roast dinners, which consist of boiled potato, mashed potato, roast potato, sauteed potato, and of course, watching my siblings open the presents I got for them. I still remember fondly the look on one sister's face when she unwrapped the roller skate she'd wanted, look on one brother's face when he unwraps the handheld synthesizer that he didn't even know he wanted, and the look on my godson's face when he unwraps the books that he didn't want as much as the dinosaur toy I got for his brother. But here's the thing, back in August I was doing pretty well. I hadn't started my Christmas shopping per se, but I had begun my Christmas window shopping. Then suddenly, my version of the Roman census struck. Only it wasn't me being called to leave my life at home and return to my place of birth. It was my money being called to make sure I still had a life at home. In recent months, the demands on my finances have been unwieldy, unexpected, and most of all, unwelcome. The slightly sudden house move had an impact, but I planned and managed for that one. The even more sudden triple breakdowns of my car were trickier. And then there was the theatre show I mentioned last week, which cost a fair whack and got nothing back. Plus there were Tito's unplanned trips to the vet, all of which left me with a choice. Go homeless in the first few weeks of the new year, or face potential ridicule and resentment by turning up at my friend and family gatherings with nothing to give. That could have seriously ruined my whole Christmas. Of course, here's where I must say a huge thanks. Yep. Again, to my family. They're the kind of family who are always quick to utter that heartwarmingly cheesy adage, your presence is presence enough. They know my business has its ups and downs. They understand when I'm unable to treat them just as much as they appreciate it when I'm doing well enough to do so. They'd rather I arrive with nothing but love and smiles and hugs than not arrive at all. At least that's what they say to my face. But I reckon there's more to it than that. When Mary and Joseph arrived at that inn 2,000 years ago, they may not have found themselves in the most comfortable of positions, but they did come out of it with the most famous new beginning in the history of history. Having an austere Christmas after past abundant ones may show that nothing lasts forever, but it's also a great reminder that awesome, life-changing joys can be on the horizon, even if things right now look Pretty mangy. Get it? Mangy? As in dingy, but also manger? No? Oh well. So yeah, a big thank you to my family this Christmas, and a big thank you to Christmas for showing the true meaning of hope, and that is promise. And many of you have sent thanks for your families too, like Lucy Mitchell here on Facebook, who thanks her mum and stepdad for a huge spread of food lovely presents, and just having her over for Christmas. Mummy Tracy Rose thanked her daughters Heather, Lauren and Erica for some very thoughtful gifts, and got thanks right on back from Erica, 
who also thanks her new wife for treating her like a princess. What better way to spend Christmas than being locked in a tower and guarded by a dragon, huh? In fact, it's a whole loop of thanks, as Erica's new wife, Lauren, thanks her back for spoiling her on their first Christmas together as a married couple. The first of many that'll be just as magical, ladies, we're sure. We've also got Hannah Granger here, who feels blessed by Slimming World for helping her get her weight down and her confidence up. But she couldn't have done it without the support of her friends and family too. Thanks for sharing with us, Hannah. Gwen Kenwood is grateful to her Danish friend Gita, who has been a wonderful pen pal this year. In fact, a picture pal, because she's been cheering Gwen up with some beautiful photos of her hometown in Denmark. So thanks very much, Gita, and Gwen really hopes to see you sometime in 2015. And also on Facebook, Diana Aitchinson is thankful for wonderful surprises from family and friends, but also asked us to send some best wishes to her dear friend Linda Smith, who is unfortunately spending Christmas in hospital. Well, Linda, from all of us Gratacasters, we hope you enjoy your Christmas and some of that festive magic rubs off on helping speed your recovery. Similarly on Twitter, Jeremy Banning was grateful to Nottingham Children's Hospital for the superb care they gave to his daughter. You never think of a hospital as a place you want to spend Christmas, so I think we all owe a huge debt of thanks to all those medical professionals who were there ready to offer the purest of Christmas spirits. So a huge thanks to them, and a huge get well soon to Jeremy's daughter too. Calculus and Cream Teas gave thanks for the health improvements, family and amazing carer that made this Christmas, and indeed birthday, very special indeed. Thanks for sharing that with us, Calculus. And finally, I'm not sure what this beverage contains, but it looks like sheer deliciousness. It's no wonder that Ashlyn Marissa is grateful to At Mormon Coffee for putting it together for her. I want one. Thanks for sharing, Ashlyn. Thanks also to everyone who suggested Christmas songs for our Yuletide Gratitude. It seems the most popular suggestion was this one, Roy Wood's I Wish It Could Be Christmas Every Day, first suggested by Hannah on Facebook. Do you know what? If I've learned anything from presenting the Gratacast this year, it's that if you take a moment each day to count your blessings, then it can make it feel a bit like Christmas every day. So, great suggestion, folks. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe, which you can do right now by clicking on the Christmas tree and encourage your friends to do the same. It's completely free, and by doing so, you're helping us to direct some of YouTube's ad revenue towards biomedical research into the degenerative disease of ME. But don't forget, you can also support us by sharing your blessings and gratitudes in the comments on this video, or by following the links to our social media below. So finally, thank you for watching. Before I leave you though, one last thing. If you ever feel like saying, bah humbug, just remember, sheep and creepy crawlies were there in the stable too, so you're technically singing one of the first lullabies that baby Jesus ever heard. Stay thankful, and Merry Christmas for Nary Christmas.